What's poisoning my children? I'm Robert Evans, host of Behind the Bastards, the show where every week I try a different intro that often ties in to the theme of the episode, but not always, but does in this case. This is also a podcast where we talk about the very worst people in all of history. And my guest today is Billy Wayne Davis. Good morning. We should, should have had an air horn in there. I like that. Very frustrated with myself for not planning that ahead of time. Do it in post. Yeah, we'll we'll do it in post. Uh, yeah, we'll put some air horns over us saying we'll do it in post in post too, so that people can't tell that we had to talk about this. I'll, this will just be like thirty seconds is, of air horns. We're making sausage right here in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. Is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People say you don't want to see how the sausage is made, but then how would you know that it is essentially the same process as poop? It is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. And it's oddly satisfying if you. Watch oh yeah, it. yeah, it is much of, like poop. It yeah. Is. yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of those cliches, right? I don't believe that. Now, uh, Billy, I couldn't see because I'm not in the room with y'all. But, but how was Sophie's reaction to the intro of this episode? She said, "That's the double thumbs down with the eye roll." The double thumbs down with the eye roll. And okay, now that there's means like she's a, really a unhappy. Proud nodding, yes, about this. Proud yeah. nodding. Okay. okay. Well, at least she's proud about my ability to interpret her hand gestures. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, Billy, this is your second time on the show. And uh, the first time you came on, we talked about a little fella Mm -hmm. named Gary Young. And uh, old Treehead, as you you named him. Yeah, yeah. That's the farmer's nickname for him. Yeah, yeah, the farmer's nickname for him. And I had a lot of fun talking about that scammer who was performing unlicensed surgery on people and uh, medicating them with poison. And so I feel like that can kind of be our thing, is is talking about fake doctors who medicate people with poison. I think uh, that's so. awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's a good so. thing. Like, oh, I have <laughs> yeah. this thing with this guy. It's pretty cool. That's Yeah, I have this thing. We talk about grifters who poison children. It's, uh, it's a hoot. Did yeah. you know that you can just work on children? You can just do that. <laughs> you, you can just do that. It no is, one's going to stop you. <laughs> it is a perfect description of like what you can't teach children. It's like you teach children like, hey, you can't do that. You can't do that. And what they hear mm-hmm. is like, you cannot do that. And then you get to a certain age, you're like, oh, you can do anything. You're just not yeah. supposed to do stuff. Yeah, people get angry at you, but you can just not listen to those people. Yeah. Uh yeah, and that's that's really the the going to be the long-term impact I think of our current president on the national psyche <laughs> is like <laughs> yes. like before we would say anybody can be president and like wouldn't really mean it. And now it's like no, anybody can be anything we if can you just <laughs> like, say it. You say it a bunch. Yeah. Evidently the secret that's real. It's mm-hmm. it's like our our language, the English language, is the only one that where if you say a word, if you use a word incorrectly long enough, it becomes the correct way to use it. Yeah, that's just the way we've decided our society works. And if you tell the right lie long enough, it becomes true. We reward um, it. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's pretty cool that the world works that way. Well, I'm going to start reading this script, Billy. <laughs> uh, we, let's get into it. Now, I, I wrote a little prepared thing up at the start, so I'm just going to charge forward. Billy, do you have cancer? No. Lyme disease? MRSA? Multiple sclerosis? No. Any kind of hepatitis? No. HIV? Parkinson's? Malaria? No. I'm not, I mean, I know you're responding, but I'm not going to listen to your responses because I assume that in our work-a-day, disease-a-day world, the answer is maybe. And if so... I have a solution for your health woes. Good. Because I have all those. Bleach. Oh, shit. Lots of bleach. As much bleach as you can possibly fit inside your body. However much bleach you start drinking, drink more bleach than that. Do you know that is the same advice that my funnest drug using friends used to tell me about how to get a job? It was like bleach. Just drink bleach. (laughs) That's how. Just drink bleach. Yeah, you'll get a job. That that that's what your drug using friends. The advised. fun ones, the funnest ones, the fun the ones. ones without the fun jobs ones. and shit. That was always there. Yeah. like just drink bleach, man. That's all you need. Yeah. You haven't moved in this couch <laughs> since I've known you. <laughs> well, uh, 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 now I, I, I actually, I obviously, I don't want anyone to to drink bleach in the hope of curing their serious illnesses. No, it doesn't work. Uh, 
it does not work, but I, 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 I crafted that beautiful introduction because there are people out in the world right now who sell industrial bleach as a cure-all for what ails you. And thousands of otherwise presumably functional human beings believe these claims and drink bleach regularly out of the belief that it is a God-provided healing elixir. So, today we will be talking about Miracle Mineral Solution and the Genesis 2 Church of Reverend Jim Humble. Oh man, he's got. There's so many good words in what you just said. Genesis <laughs> it's, it's, two, that one. Two, two. two. Oh yeah, yeah. That's critical. Two. That yeah. one. I'll be like, go on. Okay. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. Reverend Jim Humble. And you're like, yeah. Oh god damn it, I can't. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. He's also uh, he's also called Archbishop Humble and Archbishop Reverend Jim Humble. Um. So. But my kids gotta, call me daddy. well i mean as you might have guessed by the titles he's a reverend and an archbishop of the uh, of the genesis 2 church he's also a billion year old space god uh who for reasons known only to him has decided to take on the form of an elderly con man uh in pictures which i'm going to have sophie show you in a second pretty looks like a cross pretty good Hmm? con though you don't see it coming from the old man there you don't see it coming from the old man and I'm interested in your take on his description. I would describe him as looking like a cross between dying Burt Reynolds, a southern plantation owner, and a New Mexican turquoise salesman. Oh, man, um, he sounds <laughs> like, like, yeah, like an alien designed him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he looks like he has, he's re- he's got a couple self-released country music albums, too. Yeah, banjo heavy, but he does not play the banjo in them. Um, yeah. Probably still was one of the first people to get the internet, but still using that same technology that he used it to get today. Yeah, and in the pictures I've got of him, and I don't know what order those pictures were taken, he looks older in the top one and younger in the bottom. And on the younger one, he's wearing the same hat in both, but on the one where he looks younger, he has a giant piece of turquoise on the hat. And I like to think that the turquoise made him younger. Um, and that that picture was actually taken after the first, but I don't know. That's on just the my same day cannon. when he put the turquoise on his hat, <laughs> just rejuvenated him. Yeah, you just see the results. <laughs> Do it. Take it. Take the picture. That's what everyone I've met at a gas station in Albuquerque has told me. Turquoise <laughs> will make you younger, and you can smoke it. You can definitely smoke turquoise. That's also what they tell you in Albuquerque. Here's some yeah. turquoise. You can smoke it if you want. You can smoke it. Really, the most common sentence you're going to hear in Albuquerque, New Mexico, is you can smoke it if you want. And from tourists going, this place is weirder than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah. uh, I do love Albuquerque. I do, too. So, it uh, is weird as yeah. hell, and not in it's the fun super way. super weird. Where you're like, this is dangerous, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just bizarre. Yeah, it's the it's the most SWAT teams I've ever seen in a single day has been in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which... Uh, also has my favorite head shop, so shouts out to Albuquerque. They do to, have, uh, yes, next yeah. to the university. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah there's about. some great ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Now, I'm not sure when Archbishop Reverend Jim Humble was born or where. On his own websites, he claims to have started working in the health and nutrition industry when he was in his 20s and became the manager of a health food store in Los Angeles, California. So mm-hmm. we can... You can kind of guess by managing a health food store in Los Angeles, California, like where you're going to go from there. I think that's got a job has about 100 percent grifter. And uh, if you're uh, an alien rating. trying to blend in, pretty good place. Well, yeah. I mean, we learned that from the documentary uh, Earth Girls Are Easy yes. uh, starring Jeff Goldblum. So yes. yeah. it's a good place to blend in is L.A. Yeah. at a yeah. na- health food store. You'd be like, OK, well, no <laughs> one looks like a human in here, so. Yeah, L- L.A. is the one place where in, like, line at a Ralph's, you can see a guy in a three-piece suit, a woman wearing a parka, and a shirtless dude bleeding from a cut on his chest, and none of them will stand out. Yep. It's and just like, yep. <laughs> all the same energy. Exactly. Yeah. Just, yeah. just come hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> Judging by Jim's age, uh, he probably would have been working in that health food store sometime around the 1970s or 1980s, but again, I have no way of knowing because I just have no idea how old this man is or what his actual background is. According to Reverend Humble's website, quote, 
He authored a 200-question nutritional evaluation test that determined the vitamins, minerals, proteins, and fats a person's body might be deficient in. The test was later computerized and was considered by many to be the most accurate method of determining deficiencies known at the time. Over the years, Jim has maintained his interest in alternative health and worked with various healing modalities, including healing his own broken neck in record time using <laughs> magnets. <laughs> I love where that paragraph goes. The yeah, journey did, it takes you it on. Did. I just like the thought of like him trying to do it, and somebody's like, Jim, stop. He's like, hold up. I'm going to do it. And just one person like, no, no, no. Let him try. Let, Let him, him try. try. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm wondering what the record for healing a broken neck was. Like, I'm imagining these doctors Self healing. Yeah, like, yeah, they're like, yeah. shit. I mean, I've seen people do watch. this before, but never that fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy so that's just great uh jim's incredible career continued beyond working at a grocery store and healing his own broken neck with magnets he claims to have gotten a job as a research engineer in the aerospace industry a claim i can find no evidence to back up uh there's actually like zero evidence aside from jim's word for most of the details of his background so please shocking. keep that in mind that is shocking yeah <laughs> shocking jim claims on his website quote he worked on the first intercontinental missile, wrote instruction manuals for the first vacuum tube computers, worked on secret radio control electronics and dozens of other state-of-the-art electronic products at Hughes Aircraft Company, Northrop Aircraft, General Motors Research Defense Laboratories, and others. Did the magnets zap that in that knowledge into him? Yeah, I think he uh, he healed his broken neck with a magnet and it taught him how to make the first missile. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Because that is a quite a jump from, like, I worked at this health food store to, mm -hmm. yeah, I work at Skunk Works. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> from, like, gro get a guy bagging your groceries to the first ICBM. Yeah, yeah, the guy that, <laughs> where I work, the guy that bagged my groceries at Trader Joe's, yeah, he mm -hmm. made the missile going to Mars in Huntsville. That's, that's what he was studying for at Trader Joe's. I can't even tell if you're joking, just, just knowing Huntsville. <laughs> that is true. That is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. And oddly enough, true of both Huntsville, Texas, and Huntsville, Alabama. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. That is a good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Jim says he uh, he spent 20 years in aerospace missile design before deciding to get into gold mining, which is a natural career evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, so his arc so far is grocery store guy, missile designer, gold mining. Mm -hmm. uh, his goal, he says, was to find ways to recover gold without using mercury, because he thought that would be better off for the health of the miners, which is very nice of him. I mean, that is and true. I, I think he's got a point. Yeah, yeah I mean, the mercury, and any time you're having less mercury, I, I support that. Yes. Which is weird for a health foods guy. I expected him to be, like, urging people to drink mercury, but so far, he's on the right side of history. Yeah. Uh, in 1996, while prospecting in South America, he discovered the solution that would come to be known as MMS, or Miracle Mineral Solution. Mm. Uh, he called it a simple health formula that cured malaria. So, oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, now, MMS is, Has of course- Has he told other people about this? Oh, yes. He claims tens of thousands. We'll be getting to that in a minute here. So, I want to talk about what MMS is for a second. Uh, it's essentially industrial bleach. Uh, to be precise, it is 28% sodium chloride in distilled water mixed with some form of citric acid, such as the acid in orange juice, which turns the sodium chloride into chlorine dioxide. On its own, sodium chloride is not the worst thing to put in your body, provided it has been properly diluted. It's not great for you, but it's a good water purifier. So if you're like hiking through the Congo and you need to refill your canteen from a stream, Putting, you know, uh, sodium chloride in some water will stop you from getting gut worms. Uh, chlorine dioxide is basically a more intense version of that. The FDA describes it as a potent bleach used for stripping textiles and industrial water treatment. <laughs> it is used to sterilize water in huge quantities, but only safe to ingest if, again, extremely diluted. If a like, reverend tells you to. Yeah, or if a reverend tells you the, to. The as long as that time. reverend's an archbishop. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Humble claims that in Africa he discovered that, taken internally, chlorine dioxide kills malaria. Uh, he started by dosing people in Guyana, but the Guyanan government stopped him from treating people because, according to Jim Humble, U.S. pharmacy companies threatened to stop sending medicine to their hospitals because he was curing people of their malaria. Um, hmm. My guess might be they just didn't want an uh, unregulated gold mining reverend uh, 
giving people bleach. But Could you stop I wasn't there. giving the people of our country bleach? Could you stop that? <laughs> Could you stop bleaching their intestines, please? It's like you can keep you can keep doing what you're doing. Just stop that one. <laughs> Just stop the bleaching. Next, Jim Humble says he moved on to Kenya and Uganda, Sierra Leone then, and Tanzania and Malawi, uh, treating more than 100,000 people with bleach for their malaria. Outside of the Guyanan government, he says he also faced resistance from other missionaries. Quote, a couple missionaries decided I was evil and told all the missionaries in the area, so that sort of slowed things down. <laughs> they quit, u- quit using the MMS. People didn't get treated. One woman came to me with pain in her hands. She put her hand on mine, and I said, can you feel my fingers? Oh, the pain's going away. I can feel the tingling. A missionary came in and said, stop it, stop it. She decided I was evil. So that's uh, Jim Humble's recitation of both his use of MMS to cure things and how he learned that he could heal by laying on hands. That's in there too. So uh, yeah. He's having a good time. He's having a good time. He's just going through Africa, touching people, making them drink bleach. And yeah. they're only just telling like, hey, stop it. Yeah, they're they're polite and nice people. They're not like murdering him for trying to poison them. Yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah. he's still like, "You guys are being dicks." Yeah, you guys are being dicks. Why won't you let me bleach people? <laughs> <laughs> I got all this bleach. I came here to find gold and I couldn't find any. Let me just bleach some people. Just, I just want to bleach a couple people. Oh, God, I didn't build rockets for nothing. <laughs> So, uh, it was during his time in uh, uh, Africa that Jim learned to heal via touch as well as bleach water. Quote, I developed a technique for healing by touch. The basic theory is that the brain controls all of the healing in your body. So, if you can increase the communication between the brain and the area that's bad, it will heal faster. In minutes sometimes. He describes it as a little bit like Reiki, but not really. Which is very scientific of him. Very detailed, (laughs) detailed description. It's like that, yeah. but it's not. It's not like I, I love the theory that like your brain is capable of healing all illness, but it's just kind of lazy until somebody like is like shakes it and was like, "No, fix his leg." Well, until you break your neck and then put it back together, then you're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, I know how to use that part. No one else does." Yeah, me and yeah, that br- that alien from ET. Yeah. <laughs> To hear Jim tell it, uh, after solving the problem of malaria once and for all, he began to realize that his industrial bleach solution seemed to be the treatment for all of mankind's illnesses. On his website, he writes, It has proven to restore partial or full health to hundreds of thousands of people suffering from a wide range of disease, including cancer, diabetes, hepatitis A, B, C, Lyme disease, MRSA, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, HIV, AIDS, malaria, autism, infections of all kinds, arthritis, high cholesterol, acid reflux, kidney or liver diseases, aches and pains, allergies, urinary tract infections, digestive problems, high blood pressure, obesity, parasites, tumors, and cysts, depression, sinus problems, eye disease, irritation, infection, dengue fever, skin problems, dental issues, problems with a prostate, erectile dysfunction, and the list goes on, which is quite a... It's impressive. Quite a list. Yeah, yeah, I I would say so. Uh, It's like CBD. mm -hmm, It's like CBD, yeah. (laughs) And like CBD, if you you can put bleach water in your fucking ice cream if you want. It's Mm -hmm. all good. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bought some Willie Nelson bleach coffee the other day. <laughs> it's great. This really, none of us has been prepared for the world of 2019 except for Willie Nelson. Like, I feel like someone woke him up one morning about six months ago and said, Willie, it's happened. People are putting pot in everything. <laughs> and he rose out of bed. Like, and My he, time has come. And he just said, send the trucks out. They're loaded. <laughs> yeah, they're loaded. <laughs> They've been ready for 20 damn years. There's a bunch of tarps, dust tarps. <laughs> Jerry Reed wakes up. <laughs> now, that sounds like a pretty comprehensive list of the things that bleach water treats, but Jim wants to make sure you know that it's not a comprehensive list. He says, I know it sounds too good to be true, but according to feedback I have received over the last 20 years, I think it's safe to say MMS has the potential to overcome most diseases known to man. So that's... Whoa. Humble. Yeah. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, he does seem to veer away from those claims a little bit in the very next paragraph, protecting himself by FDA scrutiny by writing, It is important to note that MMS does not cure diseases. MMS is an oxidizer. It kills pathogens and destroys poisons. When these are reduced or eliminated in the body, then the body can function properly and thereby heal. I often say, the body heals the body. 
MMS helps to line things up just so the body can do that. <laughs> I so. often say this because my lawyer said I had to. <laughs> yeah. God, that is... And we will see he is not consistent about it. But you know what is consistent, Billy Wayne Davis? What? The products and services who support this program and or series. God, I hope it's oil refineries. I need a new one. Oh, yeah. I hope it's an oil refinery, too. Either that or an industrial bleach company. <laughs> because I, I could use both of those, actually. Yeah. Running low. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And when you get the oil on your clothing, you want the bleach. And when you get the cancer from the oil, you also want the bleach. It, you can drink it. <laughs> you can drink <laughs> That's You've just figured out the next ad campaign. <laughs> bleach, just drink it. <laughs> just drink it. Or it. Products. Services. We're back. We're talking about Reverend Archbishop Jim Humble. He's not a Southerner, as far as I can tell, but I can't pronounce his name without letting my accent slip out a little bit. Jim Humble. It does like, have, just, he, he yeah. did take the folksy of a yeah. Southern. He knows it's ingratiating, is what it is. He's not dumb. Yeah, yeah, it's one of, I can, I can already see the big white, uh, uh, like, circus-style tents and a giant sign saying, Reverend Humble's uh, uh, Revival Crusade or something like that, like out in the out in the middle of fucking some sort of country land in Georgia, 1970s, bunch of old Cadillacs pulled up, people paying thirty dollars for blue hunks of scarf that the Reverend spits on or whatever. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Uh-huh. And that. he was like early investor in Branson. Oh yeah, he made that yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah. He's he's put a lot of money into Branson. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, but I got it back. I got it back. Most of our listeners will probably not have heard of Branson, Missouri. It's essentially Los Angeles for old people who don't like cursing. Las Vegas. Or Las Vegas. Las, Las Vegas. Vegas for old people who don't like cursing. Now, Sorry. Los right. Angeles for old people, I would fucking like to go to. <laughs> Los Angeles for old people. Isn't that just... Uh, yeah, I think it uh, may be just... It just it's yeah. just Palm Springs or Desert Hot Palm Springs. Springs. That's probably That's what the it name. Is. Yeah. Yeah. I knew there was a P name in there. Yeah, you're right. It's probably not that interesting. uh, uh, Reverend Jim Humble protects himself from his selling bleach business by claiming on his website that it is not a cure or a treatment for disease in order to protect himself from regulation. An additional layer of protection is provided by the fact that the Reverend's Genesis 2 church does not seem to actually sell Miracle Mineral Solution directly. They make most of their money by selling tickets to conventions, like the one they held in a Calgary hotel in March of 2018. Mm -hmm. Quote, Organizers declined to speak to CBC News about the meeting or whether MMS was being sold or given to delegates who paid $350 U.S. to attend the two-day session last month. The online agenda for the meeting said doses of MMS might be handed out. We might just surprise everyone so often with a dose of MMS-1. Be ready, read the itinerary. So... They're not selling bleach water for you to drink, Billy, and how dare you assume that they are. Mm-hmm. They're selling $350 tickets where you can learn how to sell bleach water to people, and maybe they'll give you some free bleach water. And you might, it might show tickets. up. It might show up. Yeah. There might be bleach water at this bleach drinking convention. It is the cardboard cutout Donald Trump of... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I try to put myself in the heads of people who are different than me on a pretty regular basis. I think mm-hmm. it's a healthy thing to do. Yeah. I've never been able to get myself in the head of someone who'd take a picture with a cardboard cutout of uh, of Donald Trump. Uh, I just don't. I just don't know. No, I don't. I just don't There's know. A, yes, I, I find myself doing that. That is a fun game. Because most people mm-hmm. I can relate to on some level mm-hmm. about everything. And then every now and then you're like, I don't get it. I don't get what. Cardboard cutout people I have trouble relating to. <laughs> Or uh, airport autograph people. Wait, wait, oh, you mean people who like approach celebrities at the airport? <laughs> mm-hmm. But, yeah, but like, yeah. but not because they're fans. Just because they they see it and are like, well, I have to get an autograph, or I'm wasting this opportunity. Well, no, these are like professional people that have like, they'll have a messenger bag with headshots of just different famous people, and if they see them at the airport, approach them and say, hey, will you sign this? 
that's fucking nuts. I didn't know that was a thing that happened. I've seen it. I mean, I'm in and out of LAX a lot. So the first time I saw it, I was like, what is that? Like, I wanted to go interrupt. That's how curious I was about what was happening. I was like, what the fuck is this? Is this your life, man? Yeah. (laughs) And then, like, quit bothering that lady. You know, it's, but she was, you know, they were all very happy to do it. So it was like this weird, but I've seen it since. And I see them standing there when I leave a lot of times. Where I'm like, God, it's so weird. See, I think the fun thing to do with that would be to become that guy, but only have pictures of LeVar Burton and mistake <laughs> every famous person for LeVar Burton. So, like, go up to Keanu Reeves and, like, would you sign this? Like, I think Meryl Keanu Streep. Reeves would be like, hell yeah. I'm a huge awesome. fan. <laughs> yeah, Keanu Reeves will, will do anything to get a smile. Um, yeah, just 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 get everyone to sign LeVar Burton's picture and then have a website that's just here are all of the different celebrities I've gotten to sign photos of LeVar Burton. Yeah. Here are the politest celebrities in existence. <laughs> yeah, this is everyone nice enough to not question me. Okay, sure. This is I don't know if he yeah. thinks is this is this an Ashton thing? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, let's 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 talk a little bit more about how the Genesis Two Church is able to sell people drinking bleach without getting in trouble for selling people drinking bleach. Can now, I ask it, the Genesis? Yes, I mean, and it may be a dumb question, but is it an actual church or is it like an organization that they're going around uh, like, like Tony Robbins style? You know, um, in a little bit, we'll get to more of what the Genesis 2 church is, and then we can revisit that question. Okay. And you okay. can decide right, for yourself yeah, gotcha. what what exactly it is. Because I'm not 100% sure how to classify the Genesis 2 church, Billy Wayne. I will tell you that right now. It That's is a cool. conversation. Yeah. So, it is, of course, illegal to sell people bleach for internal use, because that would be selling poison. Genesis 2 gets around this by having a separate entity sell their miracle bleach drink online. Uh, I found a Pathios article written by uh, Katie Joy called The Sneaky Way a Church Sells Illegal Medicine. She traces out what seems to me to be a very plausible chain of custody for how this bleach gets from the Genesis 2 church to major retailers like eBay and Amazon. It starts with a brick-and-mortar business called Kiwi's Corner, which appears to be basically a corner store based on Lake Placid, Florida. Katie noticed that the owners of Kiwi's Corner, both that Kiwi's Corner sells MMS, uh, presumably, like they say, it's for water purification, but like, you know, they sell it. And the owners of the store are Facebook friends with the co-founder of the Genesis 2 Church, Mark Grennan. Uh, She also noticed that Mark Grennan lives in Sarasota, Florida, which is 30 miles from Kiwi's Corner. Next, Katie started digging into the bevy of different Amazon and eBay sellers who actually sell the bulk of the MMS solutions that get distributed via the internet. And she realized very quickly that all of the different vendors were based out of either Sarasota or Lake Placid, Florida. So her conclusion was that Kiwi's Corner is likely being used by the church as a legitimate retailer to sell bulk MMS to a small network of vendors who then put the products up on eBay and Amazon and funnel profits back into the church. Uh, And, of course, to Reverend Archbishop Gold Scientist Jim Humble. So, Why not just run a legitimate business? Because you can't sell drinking bleach as a legitimate business. (laughs) But you could sell coffee. That's addictive. That you could... uh, uh, Coffee seems like a much better business than drinking bleach. Yes. But... If you've and it's got one of those things. Foundation. I know my coffee addiction is killing me, killing me. Just like I know my cigar addiction is killing me. I know my kratom addiction is killing me. I know my nitrous oxide addiction is killing me. <laughs> I know my alcohol addiction is killing me. But I don't have any anger at the companies that provide me with those drugs because we all understand the bargain. Yes. Tricking people into drinking poison is so much worse than just selling honest poison. It is. I love honest poison. Because yeah. people will buy honest poison. Mm-hmm, exactly. I go into the store and I see an ad for my favorite kind of tequila, and I'm like, that's a poison I can respect. It I, is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is weird. Anyway. It's weird, yeah. that disconnect. Yeah, uh, why can't you just... This is America. You can sell so many poisons legitimately. Why do you have to pick one that doesn't provide a benefit? Just like... that actually, yeah, that... You have to trick people into buying. Most you just say, mm-hmm. hey, this poison makes you feel good for a limited time. Most yeah. of the time it makes you feel like shit. And people are like, but how long do I feel good? And oh, like, no, you'll have a solid Friday night. Deal. Deal. I'm fucking in. <laughs> yeah. But Saturday, yeah. Sunday, it's going to suck. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I do not give, I don't a, give shit. a shit. Friday's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
In her article, Katie notes, quote, In 2015, the United States government convicted a man in Washington, Louis Daniel Smith, of selling Miracle Mineral Solution. He received a 51-month prison sentence after the court determined he took part in a conspiracy to defraud and sell products illegal for human consumption. The government determined he set up a fake water purification company to sell the sodium chloride. However, he instructed his consumers to use the products internally. In Florida, the sellers on eBay and Amazon, as well as Kiwi's Corner, do not explicitly say to use the products internally. However, all three vendors mention Jim Humble's protocol for using MMS. Jim's protocol consists of oral and enema use of MMS in the body. Amazon and eBay sellers recommend the purchase of a book written by Jim Humble. Now, do you think that was the company's idea that you can do an enema, or do you think they were presenting it and just one dude's like... I mean, could you put it in your butt? Is that a remedy? And they're like, sure, can't, put that in. Can it. you? That it heals. Yeah, you got to drink. You got to drink it for the top half of your body. You got to shoot it up your butt for the second bottom half of the body. <laughs> that does. I mean, that makes a lot of science proof. That does check out. Yeah, that that is some science proof. That's now, science uh, proof. I, I gotta say, Billy. You and I are actually going to spend the majority of our day today talking about bleach enemas, but most of that comes a little bit later on. <laughs> I mean, I think it has to because he did yeah. subtly throw that in there, but I was more like, hey, hey, what happened? Why would you have to throw that one in there? He's like, well, we didn't want to <laughs> yeah. leave the whole market out. So. No, you're just leaving money on the table if you're telling people to only put the bleach in one hole. Yeah, no, you're yeah. exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good Bleach all of the holes. Like, I mean, if it's good in your mouth, Technically, I, I'm imagining a corporate boardroom where all these people from the Genesis Two Church are like charting the sales of ble- drinking bleach, and then like the Don Draper guy sits up and says, "Folks, I just realized something. We've been selling people drinking bleach for years, and it's made us a lot of money. But there's a whole second hole." <laughs> yeah, where he's like, "I was in Tijuana last night. You know, there's a yeah. whole second hole. We're not. And you're like, okay, I don't yeah. know where how Don came up with this, but." He's yeah. right. God damn it, Draper, you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> now, right now, I do think it's time to get into a little bit more detail about what precisely the Genesis 2 church believes. Mm-hmm. Now, you remember a little bit earlier, I told you that Bishop Humble was a billion-year-old space god? Yep, I remember that. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I learned that from an in-depth ABC7 report on the man. It states, quote, their founder, Jim Humble, is a former Scientologist who claims he's a billion-year-old god from the Andromeda Galaxy. Hold on. Quote from Jim Humble. I need to interrupt what you said, because you said former Scientologist. Former, yes. That's not easy to be. That's That's not easy to be. I mean, that sounds made up in itself. Well, Jim goes on to say in a video that ABC7 watched, and then I asked to be put in the part of the Space Navy that watched over Earth. So he is... (laughs) He's, he's not just a, I stand corrected. He's not, he's not just a billion-year-old space god. He's a Navy man. Mm-hmm. There's honor in that space god. There's honor. He yeah. has earned it. I bet he has himself a little uniform, and I bet it's really something special. There's a lot now, of jingle jangle on that uniform. Billy, I really wanted to bring in more details about uh, Reverend Humble's status as a billion-year-old space god, but I, I just couldn't find it. I couldn't find the video ABC7 apparently watched. Uh, I did look for some videos of Jim Humble, and I found a video interview on YouTube conducted by Mendalia Television, which is a Spanish-language video production company focused on spirituality and healing and other new AG woo stuff. They have 1.3 million YouTube s- subscribers. Now, the video interview is partly in Spanish, uh, and in it, Jim Humble talks about his extraterrestrial experiences. And this is interesting to me because it seems to conflict a little bit with his statements that he's a billion-year-old space god from the Navy. Um, So we're going to play some clips about this in a second. Uh, I'm going to set up the first one. Jim starts telling the interviewer a rambling, kind of coherent story about his time being abducted by aliens. Uh, and he claims that these, well, he doesn't start off by claiming they were aliens. He says they were strange beings that he found in a crater in the desert. <laughs> and he says they injected him with a gigantic needle. And uh, I'm going to let I'm gonna let Jim <laughs> take it from here for a little bit. The pain was absolutely excruciating. El dolor era increíble. They didn't give me anything for pain. No me daba nada para el dolor. And, uh, and then... They put an electrical connection on each 
arm. Y después puso un conexión eléctrica en cada brazo. I, I, I'm an electronic engineer, so I understood what they were doing. Like Como un ingeniero I mean, electrónico, yo sabía lo que estaba haciendo. And they put uh, connections okay? on my legs. Y pusieron también conexiones en, en sus piernas. And then they shocked, they put electrical shocks, but I could tell that it was some kind of information. In other words, y, o sea, puso un shock eléctrica, pero él sabía que estaba poniendo un tipo de información. Some kind of digital information was being transmitted into my body. Sentía que algún tipo de información digital estaba entrando su cuerpo. Well, I'm a doctor, After so I know uh, where my legs were. Uh, <laughs> an eternity. Después una eternidad. Of pain. De dolor. They they pulled up the <laughs> thing out of my chest. Sacó la aguja de su pecho. There was some blood, but not much. Había un poquito de sangre, pero no mucho. I love the workmanlike professionalism of that translator. <laughs> yes. Yes. She's like, oh, yeah. I bet she went home and she was like, oh, today was fucking crazy. <laughs> How much work today, honey? Fucking wild. It was yeah. awesome. Uh. <laughs> so Jim claims that these strange beings shot him full of information that caused him horrible pain and then they wiped his mind uh he says he was abducted at but least how, one more time oh, how mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. you got questions so many <laughs> things in that one sentence that you just yeah. said that, yes that yes is like you if they wiped your mind how do you know about it how can you mm -hmm. also he oh said, that's coming but, up that's coming up this is an airtight story billy wayne i don't know why i doubted him <laughs> yeah so he was abducted one more time, but he kept forgetting all this because his mind got wiped, and it didn't come back until he made friends with a couple who had what he calls a truth detector, which he describes as the opposite of a lie detector. Which, because <laughs> you know how women be lying all the time, so you gotta <laughs> yeah. tell when they're telling the truth. Mm hmm. He says that this truth detector had been tested on millions of people before him. Uh, and once he used the truth detector, that's what informed him that it had been aliens that abducted him. Um, so, uh, see, like I said, it's an airtight tale. Well, he got me on that one. He did get yep, me. Yep, yep, yep. It's a perfect circle. I rest now, my after... case, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is a truth detector. <laughs> now, uh, after the truth detecting, uh, Jim came to believe that the needle had been part of an experiment by aliens to see if they could kill him. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Jim talk is again here. Is that an experiment it, or is that just an <laughs> attempt? I, he says it was an experiment to see if they could kill him. I guess you could call it an experimental murder attempt. Okay, that makes more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that guy who shot Ronald Reagan. I think he yelled right before pulling the trigger. Experiment. This is a theory but, I have. <laughs> yeah, I have a theory about this 38. <laughs> Yeah, I was uh, right. I was right. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> but let's do that. Fuck, that comes out fast. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, here's 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 Jim Humble talking about this uh, alien murder experiment a little bit more. Why I, didn't you die? I suspect because because I had been practicing all those years releasing the tension. Como, como I didn't yo estaba die. practicando todos estos años para para rejalarme, para, para sacar la tensión, no murió. And the other reason why I didn't die is because I have spiritual protection. Y el otro razón que no murió es porque yo tengo protección espiritual. I came, I came to this world to do a job Llegó a este mundo para hacer un, un trabajo with many other people con muchas otras personas and Thousands of people have already come to me and said, I know you came, and I came with you. <laughs> that makes me laugh, because, because, come. It is, yes. Yeah, 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 there's the way he said it, too. It was like, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. You, get so, what, you get what I'm doing. I'm an old man. 
yeah, um, I, I, yeah. So this this is all extremely curious to me because it doesn't seem to jive with Humble's uh, professed existence as a billionaire old god uh, and also Space Navy member. Um, I haven't found any interviews with Humble that might tie all this together, tragically. Maybe he forgot about being a billion-year-old space god for a while, and he had to take another truth-detecting test to, mm-hmm. to, to loop it all together. Um, tragically, the exact mystery of his background will uh, remain a reality. Um, I don't want to defend a man, mystery because it's hard, but billion years, you're going to forget some stuff. You're going to forget some shit. You're going to forget why you joined the Navy. Yeah. I have friends who were in the Marines eight years ago that don't remember why they joined. So, you know, it's. it's... Yeah, well, that usually, that's usually about two weeks in. They're like, well, no, why did we do this? Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Now, uh, the good Reverend Archbishop is one of those figures who's badly in need of like a really good 6,000 word spy magazine feature article. (laughs) <laughs> um, but unfortunately, Spy Magazine does not exist anymore, and that article will remain forever unwritten. I can find no comprehensive, logical layout of the man's dirty life and times. Uh, none. The information, There's no... None. None. Nothing. Nothing. There's so when some... did he come to be, like, as far as records? I don't even... Like, the earliest stuff I find on him is from, like, the fucking, uh, like, the late 90s, but most of that's even self-reported. Like, he doesn't really show up until the, the aughts, like, in a in a way, at least, that I've I've found hard evidence of. That's impressive. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know. I don't know much. I don't even know the fucker's birth date, so... Maybe it's just a failure of Googling on my part because there's a lot of information to digest. And it's one of those things. It's kind of like with Gary Young where you're kind of filtering through a lot of sketchy sources. Like it's not one of those things where I'm finding a lot of, you know, New Yorker and Atlantic articles. Like I'm breaking down people's blogs who are like transcribing videos that this guy recorded 10 years ago and stuff. And it's like this seems like they're probably telling the truth, but it's a mess. Jim Humble is a mess and trying to figure out the truth about him is a mess. Um, everything is a lie. Deta- everything a lot. Everything he says is a lie. Um, and the people who are tracking him, who seem to be trying to do it out of a good place, um, just don't have a lot of institutional credibility behind them. Like yeah. the most detailed source I found on the Genesis Two Church comes from a site called Cyram.org, which bills itself as the Wiki of Irrational Belief Systems. Hmm. Um. And so it's not one of those things like I can't say that Cyram is a, a, a recognized, credible source, but I will say that a lot of what I found there has been backed up by other sources. They try to cite their work as much as possible, although a lot of the links are dead at this point because a lot of it goes back to like 2006 or whatever. But most of what they say seems pretty on point and verifiable with like the information I've been able to find elsewhere. So I've used a lot from the Cyram source because they write a lot about Genesis 2 church and I didn't really f- know what was going on with that church until I found that source. So, you know, you're not going to you're not going to find a lot of smoking gun sources on Jim Humble. He's just that kind of dude. He's lived in the shadows and the margins his whole life. Yeah. So, and yeah, yeah. and he probably doesn't know. Yeah, that's fascinating. No, he probably does not know because he's been getting so he's got so much information shot into his head by aliens. So you're going to forget some shit. Yes, and you forget mm-hmm. who you're telling that information to. And you yeah, just need you to do. Drink this bleach and shut up. <laughs> you just need to drink this bleach and sober up. Now, uh, Cyram says that James V. Humble really was an engineer at some point and authored several pre-transistor computer and mining technology manuals. So it does seem like that was what he was doing up until recently. Uh, and if so, that would kind of make sense because there's a whole long history of engineers who go on to become quasi cult leaders, selling people snake oil medicine. Uh, it notes that, quote, his whereabouts are currently not known for sure. He is most probably living in Mexico, which would square with the Mendalia television mm-hmm. interview and also with the fact that con artists usually wind up in Mexico. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah, they really do. <laughs> so it's one of those things. It's like every time they're like, I mean, if it doesn't, we just go to Mexico. I If I become president, rather than trying to stop uh, illegal immigration from Mexico to the United States, I'm going to try to stop America from sending con artists to Mexico. <laughs> like, this is how we can help the world. <laughs> that would, yes, uh, that would help. Yeah. They're like, thank yeah. you. Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. 
Now, these Siram write-up notes that MMS is not Reverend Humble's only miracle cure. His church also pushes the less popular MMS-2, which contains calcium hydrochloride, uh, which is a product used in Germany for disinfecting swimming pools. Mm. Reverend Humble advises people to take it internally for viruses and parasites. He's got a real thing for selling people industrial cleaning products and telling them to drink them. Well, yeah, and it won't. Yeah, algae and stuff won't get in your your mm-hmm. insides. It's nice. You yeah, can, people can swim. Yeah, lung algae is a real problem in this workaday world. <laughs> you know what else is a real problem in this workaday world, Billy Wayne? Yes. People who don't have enough products and services. They just we it is and advertising it's, for those products and services. and advertising for those products and services. I was looking at some horrible pictures of the flooding in Oklahoma recently, and I thought. If only there had been more products and services. Wouldn't have happened. That could, yeah, it wouldn't have happened. Enough products and services. Can well, a lot of people thought it was uh, homosexuality that caused it, but it's mm-hmm. a lack of advertising Product. for products and services. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things people are worried about the melting ice caps and what it's going to do for uh, the sea level around you know all of our coastal cities. And what if we just surround our coastal cities in a levy of products and services? Content. Boom. Boom. Yeah, content. Content will save us. Uh, so, products. Service. Sophie, was that good? He, she said no, but I thought it was she good. said she said no. Well, Maybe you know, work so hard to go to an ad break. <laughs> Everybody, Sophie, if you're not working hard, you're hardly working. And then, how are you going to earn the big bucks? That's what I got to ask. Yeah, you got sold like your soul to the. Clear Channel Devil, right? Mm-hmm. You name me another podcast host who starts his ad break and three minutes later has not actually gone out to the ad break. And I'll show you a podcast host who works as hard as I do to sell products and services. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She just it's what the audience wants, Sophie. She just sighed in that way that yeah. females do. It is more she communicative si- than it is breathing. Yeah, she sighs a lot like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, products! We're back. Hey, we're back. We're back. I, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know if there are podcast awards, Billy Wayne, but if if there are one, the only one I want is one for longest amount of time, but for the start of an ad break and actually going out to ad break. I think you That's won. The, I think you won. I think I, I think I will win. I don't think anybody can compete with me. Who do you think? You think fucking? Yeah, none of them. None of them. None no, of them can do that. You can't even name names. That's how. Far can't even ahead name names. Are. No, I'm like I'm like the Michael Jordan of taking way too long to get out to an ad break. <laughs> Michael Jordan might beat you at that. Yeah, he probably would. He's 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 got a lot of endurance. All right, uh, let's get back here. So back to that Siram write up of Reverend Humble, and uh, yeah, we, we were just talking about how he also advises people to take a swimming pool disinfectant for viruses and parasites. The article notes, quote, judging from recent announcements and interviews, Humble apparently wants to have MMS tested in Haiti. Most recent announcements gives reason to suspect the worst for uninformed patients. He currently claims to research the treatment of MMS with cancer, hepatitis C, and AIDS patients. Quotation Humble. We've started doing clinical trials for AIDS, hepatitis C, and cancer, and those trials have been going pretty good, and we have a guy who's head of the prison system there. He's also helping us, and a local hospital has agreed to give us 300 blood tests for free. So... Jim Humble is claiming to be testing uh, uh, bleach drink on curing AIDS of prisoners and cancer, so that's good. I don't understand. Okay. In Haiti? Yeah. Has he killed people yet? Or is it their best? Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Like, we'll we'll get into it, but, like, absolutely. <laughs> but he's, like, his mindset is, like, oh, all these, this, like, big pharma is out to get me because I've got a solution Mm -hmm. And that solution is poisoning Haitian prisoners with bleach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which sounds like, this guy is like, he's a perfect character for like a Warren Zevon song. Like everything I just (laughs) said there is, yeah, uh, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, he's Uh, something that cocaine created. Yeah. (laughs) yeah. Uh, In that interview where he talked about bleaching prisoners, the interviewer asked him, are you allowed to say here on camera that MMS will cure cancer? To which Jim Humble responded, sure, I can say it. MMS will cure cancer. Um, 
Now, the original interview seems to have been scrubbed from the internet. The Cyram write-up links to external sites covering it, but I cannot find the original. However, it, it certainly sounds like Jim Humble. Um, Cyram claims that Humble's switch from reverend to bishop reverend happened in 2010 after uh, Humble was declared bishop by, quote, the alleged archbishop <laughs> Lawrence Jensen and his wife, the alleged bishop Glenda Green of the One Holy True Christi- Original Church from Arizona, which is also active as Spiritist Church, Order of the Fringe of Yeshua, the Byzantine Catholic Church Incorporated, the Liberal Catholic Church, the Old Roman Catholic Church, the American... Orthodox Catholic Church, and so on. So those are all the same church, Billy. God. Yeah. Now, these people are alleged bishops because the original church seems to function mostly as a bishop mill, which is something I did not know existed prior to this. I did not know. Yeah. I thought you used to just call it, yourself that. Yeah. No, That's you've got to... You got to find a grifter who's got an, a long running bishop grift before you can add bishop to your list of grifters. You've got to pay another grifter before you can call y- yeah. yourself a bi- bishop. It, it, it's it's part of this vast ecosystem of grift. At uh, least there's like, an the etiquette, only... you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. At least there's an etiquette. <laughs> hey, so, hey, uh, you can't just be calling yourself a y- bishop. This guy's already gotta... thought of that. Yeah, this guy's thought of that, and he's been doing it for 10 years, so everybody who calls themselves a bishop has to pay him some money first. You have to pay it a little homage. (laughs) Yeah. So, the original church claims to have been formed in part by a Catholic priest named James Wedgwood, who left the church after he was investigated for making pedophilic advances to young boys. So, like, a real priest formed this church, which now exists to sell bishops bishoprics or whatever. So like you call one of the few people. priests to get caught. Yeah. Was yeah. like, yeah, I'm gonna start my own church. I'm gonna start my own church and sell being a bishop to people. So that they can claim that it goes back to Jesus. That like there's an unbroken chain of uh, 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 uh of bishoprics all the way back to the original apostles. So that's how Jim Cumble claims to be a bishop. Jeez. Um now, I bet you're wondering what the Genesis 2 church means, why it's the Genesis 2 church, for one. Uh, Jim Humble has said in an interview, quote, it's called Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing because Genesis means the beginning and 2 means the second beginning, and this is the beginning of a new world without disease. No, 2 so. does not mean second beginning. <laughs> no, it does not. No, no. It, means, it means 2. No, it means two. For example, Aliens was not a second beginning to the Alien franchise. It was it was just a really good movie about aliens mm-hmm. that was the second in a series. Yeah. yeah. It's the second one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, are, are you wondering what it takes to be a member of the Genesis 2 Church, Billy? Have you been, you've been considering getting in, getting in on that? I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, all it takes is $10 and a refusal to ever get vaccinated. So, oh, it's like that's, REI. It's it's like REI. <laughs> Ten dollars, and I will I will not get vaccinated. And you, I will never get vaccinated, Rick. Well, here's and they'll sell you all the machetes you can tents. eat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you go into an REI and just start telling everyone who works there that you refuse to get vaccinated, really interesting things happen. Well, they're um, like, "Hey, the owner's here." <laughs> I love telling people I'm part owner of REI. They always look at me like, yeah. what? I'm like, everyone. Yeah, they're very impressed by that. <laughs> like, what? I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what a co-op means. Yep, I get a dividend every year of about 25 <laughs> cents. Because yeah. uh, their oh. stuff lasts forever, so you don't have to keep buying mm-hmm. it. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Yeah. It it, it, it actually kind of, well, some of it, you know. Well, it all I allegedly had... does. I have yeah. several jackets that are guaranteed a lifetime, which bothers me in my closet. Uh, 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 right. Uh, so when, when when you become a member of the Genesis Two Church, they will send you a church identification card that states that you cannot be vaccinated, so that you have a religious exemption to getting vaccinated, which is is great. These people tie into to that too. Um, all proceeds from these memberships are routed to an account based in the Dominican Republic, which seems to be where Jim Humble has based his business, although he probably lives in Mexico most of the time, but he might live in the Dominican Republic. He, he seems to generally live in places where he can't be prosecuted for selling people bleach water. He also scouts um, for the Seattle Mariners in the off season too. <laughs> That's why he's mostly in the Dominican. He's a bird dog scout for the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> he's just looking for good. 
baseball players. They're good. Bleach. They're everywhere down here. You give them a little bleach, mm-hmm. you see what they're made of. <laughs> now, membership in the Genesis 2 church confers some significant advantages. If you pay a little bit extra, you can be made a priest of the church and call yourself reverend. So that's oh, pretty oh. sweet. That's yeah, just... yeah, exactly. See, now it sounds a little bit better. Uh, Jim Humble seems to be trying to set up a little bit of a pyramid scheme bit with this. He advises his pastors to hand out free bottles of Miracle Mineral Solution in exchange for donations. He believes this is legally distinct enough from selling poison that none of his pastors will get into trouble. Quote, We already have tremendous lawyers who will help us. If you wish, you will receive a pastor's certificate and you will have the legal right to use reverend in front of your name. It will be legal for you to not pay income tax. You can also receive a certificate to start a chapter of our church right there in your area. I am interested now. (laughs) Yeah. You can hand out tracts telling about MMS and our healing and you will no doubt have people come to you for healing. It will be best not to charge for your service. Instead, ask for donations after they get well. And that only usually takes a few days. Most people will want to donate something when they get well. You will make more money that way than selling the bottles of MMS. If you keep at it, you should soon have enough to start building a church. Our course teaches you how to handle all diseases and health problems except those needing surgery, which is a small number. We expect reasonable donation, but not a great big either. But of course, great big donations are okay. So, really nice guy, Jim Humble. He's just, he's trying to help people is what he's trying to do. It's very he's clear. He's very clear that very he just wants clear. to help. You just ask for donations because if you don't, it's illegal what we're yeah. doing. <laughs> if you don't, we're just selling people poison. Yes. But if you do, you don't have to pay income tax on the poison you sell. I did put that in the middle of that paragraph. Yeah. yeah. On purpose. Now, A 2010 Guardian article on Humble reviewed an issue of his MMS newsletter called Straight Talk with Jim Humble, which sounds like a Fox News show. The uh, Straight Talk newsletter detailed his strategy for spreading his medicine to the world using his church as a vector. Quote from Jim Humble, Look at the Catholics. Their priests have been molesting women and children for centuries, and the governments have not been able to stop it. If handled properly, a church can protect us from vaccinations that we don't want, from forced insurance, and from many things that a government might want to use to oppress us. He's not wrong (laughs) about that. He's not wrong. Not not, wrong at all about what he... I mean, it is... Not coming from a good place, but he's not <laughs> wrong. And I, I'm fascinated by the kind of person whose logic goes in these steps. The Catholics are allowed to rape as many kids as they want, so having a church can protect me from getting vaccinated. <laughs> yes. Like, that is some galaxy brain shit right there, Jim Humble. <laughs> well, he was he was just sipping on a little of his own supply. Yeah. And he's like, I got it. Yeah. I got me a fucking idea. Yeah, the bleach leaked into my head and got into my logic part. Now, Jim Humble offers longer courses in the Dominican Republic on how to administer poison bleach uh, water. For $750 in one week's time, you can become a minister of health and put an MH after your name. If that's not enough, you can pay $1,500 for a three-day trip to Haiti, where you will administer bleach water to seriously ill people and receive an MMS certificate, which allows you to add the title Reverend Doctor to your name. And I gotta be honest, folks, I am only barely resisting the urge to pay $1,500 to be able to call myself a Reverend Doctor right now. Like, that is... That's a hard thing to not. Oh, do. if I got a national, if I got booked in a national commercial this year, I'll pay for both of us to become Reverend Doctors. Hell yeah, that's a weekend. You and me go to Haiti, feed yes. people some bleach, become Reverend Doctors. Yes, <laughs> I'm an already oh. ordained minister from the yeah. Church of the Life Church or whatever it is. Absolutely. So I'm why just... not add Reverend Doctor? Fuck yes. Reverend Doctor Menace. I'm those damn commercial a... directors that that will motivate them to cast me. I'm like, no, 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 hear me out. This is what we need to yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <sighs> uh, okay. So uh, there's also a really one of the best sources I found on Jim Humble and his church was a really in depth report done by ABC Seven. Uh, they're the ones who claim Humble believes himself to be a billion year old god from the Andromeda Galaxy. They sent an undercover reporter to a church seminar in Costa Mesa, California, where they met with Archbishop Mark Grennan. She filmed with her iPhone, the reporter filmed with her iPhone, and caught uh, the Genesis 2 church instructing new reverends on what to say. 
Tell them Jesus heals you while you drink this, our cameras captured Grinnan telling the seminar. ABC News Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross cut up with Grinnan outside the seminar in Costa Mesa. Are you telling people you can cure breast cancer with this? Ross asked Grinnan. We tell people we can cure a lot of things. Heal, cure, treat. I can cure all those, Grinnan responded. You can treat all those diseases. Breast cancer? Ross asked. <laughs> yes, Grinnan responded. Sure. Back Fucking inside yeah. the seminar, our undercover eyewitness news producer caught Grinnan's angry reaction to his interaction with Ross. I hope they think I'm a raving lunatic. I really do, Grinnan said. He won't put up what I said. I'll be shocked if they put that on. They did, but yeah. So the report also notes that the undercover reporter was excommunicated from the Genesis 2 church after she was caught. So that's unfortunate. So if we become Reverend Doctors, Billy Wayne, we got to keep that shit on the down low if we want to keep using that title. Ah, uh, see... That defeats the whole purpose, if I'm being that honest. Def- yeah, yeah, because I would, I would wanna, I would wanna record that whole fucking week. <laughs> I would <laughs> want everyone to know what I'm doing and how I earn yeah. this. Yes, yes, I, I'm very yeah, proud w- of my Reverend Doctor status. I would be live streaming those days on Twitter. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it would be like the Charlie Sheen shit in the beginning of that, where he was just like, "You see what this dude? They're in Haiti becoming Reverend Doctors." <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Doctors. What is that? I don't know either. <laughs> they have no idea, but their clothes are ruined. They've yeah. been spilling a lot of bleach. <laughs> I've yet to start tripping, you guys. <laughs> My mouth just tastes horrible. It just tastes like an old pool. I don't like it. <laughs> So, The Guardian also infiltrated one of their events in 2019 and found very similar behavior. Uh, The church put together an effective alternative healing event at the Icicle Village Resort in Leavenworth, Washington, because Washington is grifters at ground zero. Yeah, it is. The advisor or organizer of the event, a guy named Tom Mary, noted on his Facebook page that bleach drinking training, quote, could save your life or the life of a loved one sent home to die. Attendants of the meeting were asked to donate $450 each, or $800 per couple, to attend and become members. Saving now that price, bucks. saving a hundred bucks, saving a hundred bucks for two. That's a good deal. That's Thank a good deal. I, I bet we could, if we pretended to be a couple, we could get twelve hundred bucks. You know, or, or I guess twenty five hundred total for for Reverend Doctor training. I you think know, that would be see, worth it. I think that would be worth it. I would go math uh, on that. We would be in love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we, we would. We would have to be in love. <laughs> Now, that price did include free bleach, uh, which they referred to as sacraments. The headline speaker at the event was Mark Grinnan, and the organizer posted a video to promote the event of a British MMS advocate t- visiting a village in Uganda and feeding bleach to its impoverished residents. One of the victims shown in the film is an infant lying in his or her mother's arms who is made to drink a cup of bleach. The child screams as the fluid is swallowed. Mm-hmm. Yep, because mm-hmm. it's bad. Because the bleach is the bleach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now... This is probably a good time to talk about the side effects of drinking bleach, which should not be a thing I have to inform people of. Does it burn? Does it (laughs) burn? It can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, intestinal distress, damage to your red blood cells and respiratory system, and worse. An FDA spokeswoman told The Guardian. Worse than damaging your red blood cells and your respiratory. Just worse stuff. Yeah, because it can fucking kill you. Yeah. (laughs) Which is what the FDA said. Uh, anyone who has bought these products is advised to throw them away. Unless you need to clean your swimming pool, then it might help. Mm-hmm. But, of course, people don't tend to listen when the FDA warns them that they're poisoning themselves. What started as the sacrament of one very specific nutty church has spread across the alternative healthcare ecosystem to become the nonsense medication of choice for a whole generation of fake doctors. God In our next episode it. of this two-part series, we will be talking about one of, and perhaps the most prominent of these bullshit which is a word that looks better spelled than pronounced. Uh, A lady named Kelly Rivera, or Carrie Rivera, sorry, uh, who has claimed for several years to be able to cure autism using bleach. So that's what we're going to be talking about in part two of this episode. But for now, Billy, it's time to go away for a little while. Yeah, I'm going to piss bleach for a second. Yeah, let's all go piss some bleach, drink a little bit more bleach, piss and drink some bleach. Uh... Have us a good-ass time and come back on Thursday to hear about the woman who prescribes drinking bleach as a cure for autism. Oh, I hope it's Jenny McCarthy. No, it's not. This is a woman who's actually a lot worse than Jenny McCarthy. So I I don't know if I'll be back. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Well, that's a real problem for me because (laughs) nobody else is going to sit and talk with me about bleach drinking for another hour. I'll be back. Um, I'll be back. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Well, 
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, folks of indeterminate and non-binary gender, uh, everybody grab yourself a cup of bleach and uh, and come back on Thursday. And uh, Billy Wayne, you want to plug your pluggables before we sail out on a river of bleach? Just at Billy Wayne Davis on Instagram or Twitter, and my tour dates will be up at bwdtour.com. Cool beans. I am Robert Evans. You can find me on Twitter at I Write OK. You can find this podcast and Twitter and the gram at, at Bastards Pod. Uh, we have a website, BehindTheBastards.com, where you can find all of the sources for this episode. And we also have uh, t shirts on tpublic.com. You can also buy Behind the Bastards branded drinking bleach. So drink some bleach, it's healing. I think that's it. Sophie, have I forgotten anything? No. No, she said no. She said no. Beautiful. That's it. Podcast!